Good morning to brothers and sisters. Uh, we want to thank God for giving us this opportunity so that we can worship together. And uh, we, we know that God wants us to understand him more and more and he teach us to be Christians. Without a Christian character, it won't please God because we need to live a life like God. That's the life that, what God, that pleases God. Let us uh, pray. We thank you, Father. We praise you, living God. For those whom you call to be among the people who do say the word of God. For calling us, Lord Jesus Christ, so that we are able to live a clear life. Now we are able to see that God is near us. We love you. We love your works, Father. Forgive us the times when we do not uh, even measure up to what you look at, what you expect of us. In the stillness we lay before you, Father, that uh, we are nothing without you. And Lord Jesus Christ, it is this time that we come before you so that you nourish us with your word. You rebuke us with your word. You teach us with your word. You correct us with your word. Father, we, we just want to live just like you. Help us, Father, to understand the Christian principles that we should live as Christians, as people of the way. Be with us, Lord Jesus Christ, in this very service. Open our hearts, Lord. Open our ears so that we hear the word of God coming to us, preaching to us, saying something to us. Thank you, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. I will call my brother Ben to come and do the reading from the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verses 30, uh, 24 to 32. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 24 to 32. Thank you, Johnson, and another awesome verse for you this week. Uh, as Johnson mentioned, Ephesians 4, 24 to 32 and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbour, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands, they, then, that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may be benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Awesome. I wonder what he's going to share this week. It's going to be um, another beauty. So keep bring ears and to hear and, yeah, let's get him back. Thank you, Johnson. Uh, thank you so much, Brother Ben, for the reading of the Word of God. Uh, this morning I've decided to share with you on the theme getting rid of anger. Getting rid of anger. Have you ever said something to somebody that you later regretted? A man named Bob Monkhouse says he got angry at the manager of his local dry cleaners and expressed his anger quite forcefully. He realized now that he probably did not leave the manager with a very favorable impression. He knows that because recently he put a red ballpen pen in the breast pocket of his white shirt and forget to put the cap on it. It made a ghastly red stain with a dark center all over the pocket. His wife said, it won't wash out, I will try the dry cleaners. So his wife took the white shirt with a dark red stain on the shirt pocket to the very dry cleaner Bob had exploded it. The manager took a long, slow look at the dark red stain on the front of the shed and then looked sideways at Bob's wife and said quietly, good shot. 
I would say Bob probably didn't make a very good impression on that manager. I want to ask if any of you have ever gotten upset and said anything you should not have said in your life. I, I, I have said certain things in my life that when I look at it, I said, I should not have said that. But sometimes you say it out of anger. In our lesson for the day from Ephesians, St. Paul says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. What does it mean to grieve the Holy Spirit of God? The Holy Spirit is that part of the Godhead that dwells within us. It is the voice of God speaking to us about our ongoing relationship with God, with others, and even with ourselves. We grieve the Holy Spirit when we live in a way that is discordant with the kind of person whom God has called us to be. When we live the life that doesn't please God, we grieve the Holy Spirit. We grieve the Holy Spirit when we say things which have nothing about to glorify God. It is challenging to be a new person in Jesus Christ. In particular, when we read the details of the new life that Paul describes about never being angry or deceitful or having malice in our hearts or about never letting any corrupt words is kept out of our mouth, our lips. Even anger it is the manager of the dry cleaners. But Paul, in the last two verses of the fourth chapter, indirectly gives us a little formula that should help. The first part of the art formula is this, look inward. That is, take care of what is inside you. Take care of what is inside you. Consider those words again. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with malice. With all malice. Do you have any of those negative emotions within your heart or mind? Where you've got negative emotions, even you can't comment positive on anything that needs to be positive. You are always on the negative side because there's something inside you. Let's face it, there are many otherwise committed Christians who have a great deal of anger within them. There are committed Christians who are quite bitter. There are others with malice in their hearts. Paul asks us to look within at a negative emotions that may dwell there. The late radio personality Paul Harvey once told about a medical student who was doing a rotation in toxicology at a poison center, uh, control center. A woman called in a very upset because she caught a little daughter eating ants. So the medical student quickly reassured the mother that the ants were not harmful and there would be no need to bring a daughter into the hospital. She calmed down and at the end of the conversation happened to mention that she gave her daughter some anti-poison to eat in order to kill the ants. <laughs> so the medical student told this mother that she better bring her daughter into the emergency room right now. Anger is like anti-poison. It needs to be dealt with immediately or it could cause serious damage to our soul. A lot of people have damaged the family relationships through anger. Some of the nicest people have a great deal of anger within them. And interesting enough, it doesn't always show. Psychiatrist tells us that depression is anger turned inward. Not all depression, of course. Some depression may be explained by chemical imbalances in the body. But some of us, depression comes from anger which has never been expressed. There are some people who, when they get angry, just explode. And it is over in a short time. But there are some other people, sometimes very good people, who turn their anger inward. They may not be aware that they are angry because they've suppressed that anger for a long time. And I have heard that a lot of bullies, they do that because they've been suppressing that anger inside. So they tend to bully other people because of what they've experienced in their life. And they, they do not know why they are mourning for and weeping all the time. They go to a counselor and the counselor says, who is that you are angry at? That is what they are asking the question. Paul asked us to look inward and examine these inner emotions that are part of being human. 
For you see, our inner condition determines the way we respond to our lives. It is not what comes out from the outside that determines our behavior. It is what is already on the inside. What is already on the inside. As someone has written, projection makes per per perception. The world you see is what you gave it. Nothing more than that. It is the witness of state of your mind. The outer picture of the inward condition, as a man think it does, he perceive. Therefore, seek not to change the outward world, but choose to change your mind in the world about the world. Take off what is inside you, because what is inside you is the one that can destroy people. All of us, if we did that, we'll find some things in our lives, some darkness in our hearts that we wish not to be there. So if we are to live the new life, we, first of all, we need to look within. Look within. And Jesus said, it is not that what we eat which is not good. It is what comes out of our mouth which is really dangerous. He was saying something within us. Something within us. Not something that we take with our mouth that is unclean, but something that comes from us is unclean. But fortunately, unfortunately, we are not to stop there. The Christian faith is not a mystical faith where we sit around and contemplate on our nerves. We do begin with an inward glance, but this is only the beginning. St. Paul says, take care of the things on the inside. But he advises us to look out, outward as well. That is to take care of our relationships. Be kind and compassionate to one another. That is what he said. He writes, forgive each other. Just as Christ forgave you. You see, faith never stops with an inward look. Faith always looks outward. Be kind and compassionate to one another. That is what... I, I had this illustration. Someone sent me. Uh, I don't know exactly where it came from, but it's an anonymous illustration. He said a brother forgot to put his phone on silent and it rang in the church during prayers. The pastor scolded him. The worshippers admonished him after prayers for interrupting. His wife kept on lecturing on his carelessness all the way home. His poor vineyard co-workers shook their heads in disgust. You could see the shame, embarrassment, and humiliation on his face. He never stepped foot in the church again. That evening, he went to a bar. He was still nervous and trembling. He spilled his drink on the table. The bottle fell by accident and it splashed on some people. Those that charged right towards him, he closed his eyes expecting a bashing of words or slaps. Instead, they cared to know if he did get a cut from the broken bottle. The wait apologized and gave him a napkin to clean himself. The janitor mopped the floor. The female manager offered him a complimentary drink. The female manager offered him a, a complimentary drink. She also gave him a huge and a pick while saying, don't worry, man, who doesn't make mistakes? He has not stopped going to the bar since then. Can you see this story? It's telling us something here. There's a lesson. Sometimes our attitude as believers drives souls to hell. Sometimes our attitude as those who believe can send people away from God. We can make a difference by how we treat people, especially when they make mistakes. If you cannot be a bridge to connect people, then do not be a wall to separate them. If you cannot be a light to brighten people's good deeds, then do not be darkness covering their efforts. If you cannot be water to help people scrub, sprout, then do not be a pest destroying their crops. If you cannot be a vaccine to give life, do not be a virus to terminate it. If you cannot be a pencil to write someone's happiness, then try to be a nice eraser to remove their sadness. We can always be each other's keeper. Let us resolve to heal the world and make it a better place. Yes, we can. 
It is easier to lose soul than to win souls. Amen to that. Now, Christian faith does not consist only of kindness. Kindness is byproduct of faith in Christ. It is a misconception when people think that Christian faith is simply people being kind to one another. No, it's more about, about that. Christian faith has to do with much more than that. But at least it does deal with that. The minimal requirement of a Christian faith is that we treat others kindly and with tenderness and with respect. Such kindness is contagious when it comes from these Christians. There is a wonderful story that comes from the life of the great missionary Albert Schweitzer. A number of years ago, on his way to Aspen, Colorado, Schweitzer changed trains to Chicago. As he was standing on the station platform, he was being questioned by reporters. A woman carrying a heavy suitcase walked past immediately. Dr. Switzer excused himself. He walked over to the lady, took the heavy suitcase for, from her, and accompanied her to the car of the train she was boarding. Then he turned and walked on back to where he clustered group of reporters had been. They were no longer there. Seeing Albert Switzer's healthfulness, they started looking for some lady with a heavy suitcase whom they might help on a train too. So you can see that such kind of love is contagious. Such kind of compassion is contagious. Furthermore, there was a reason Albert Schweitzer helped that lady with the suitcase. He told about it in his autobiograph. He said that he and his wife were boarding a train one day in Africa. They had an enormous amount of luggage with them and it had been considerable difficult. A physical handicapped woman whom Suiza had treated his mission hospital came forward to help them. He had no baggage, said Suiza, because he possessed nothing. So Suiza was greatly moved by the man's offer, which he accepted. While they walked alongside by side in the scorching sun, Suiza vowed to himself that in memory of this man's kindness, he would in the future always keep a look out at stations for heavy laden people and help them. And this vow, said Switzer, he had kept. And that's why he had to do it. So Switzer added an amusing side note. On one occasion, however, he wrote, My offer made me suspected of thievish intentions. Can you imagine that? Albert Switzer suspected of being a thief because he wants to help. Yes, sometimes our help can be misconceived. Sometimes in this cynical day, when we are trying to be helpful, Trying to be kind, we can be suspected of having ultra motives. But we must make the effort if we are going to live a new life. We always try to make an effort. We cannot only be concerned with our inner righteousness, but we must also be concerned with our outer witness. The witness of concern for other people. So St. Paul writes, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ forgave you. And so today we are challenged to look inward. We are challenged to look outward. But of course, that is not the end of the pilgrimage. Either we are also reminded to look upward. Notice that it says, forgiving each other as Christ God forgave you. This is why we must forgive others. Because we have been forgiven. But this is not all. This is not all. He continues, be imitators of God. Therefore, as dearly loved children, live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave help for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. So we need to be imitating God. We should be imitators of God. Who Christ, when on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. We need to be in the position of forgiving always because God has forgiven us. There is the answer to malice and bitterness and anger. There is the answer for making us kind and tender-hearted and forgiving towards one another. We are to imitate God. We are to acknowledge and to remind ourselves of the great love and kindness and mercy and forgiveness we had received from God. To say we were once sinners, we were once people who were not accepted, but now we are accepted. We are. We have been now forgiven. Charles said, once applied this to anger, he wrote, It is no sin to have a temper, only to go on having it. And a prayer 
is the old man to bring a bad temper under control. So the best way to lose your temper, right Charles Shane, is to lose yourself in God. There is hope. To lose ourselves in God, not only to look inward and outward, but to look upward to God, who is the ground of our hope. Meaning, during that time, you need to ask God and pray to God to say, God help me. Because that is the only solution. No way in the scriptures that you say that this is easy, but it is possible. I don't know any other way for us to forgive and accept others who have done us wrong than to remember that God has accepted us. And God has forgiven us. So we are forgiven sinners. The ultimate hope for us in meeting the challenge of each day is not only to look inward or outward, but also to look upward. Knowing that God can forgive us. Knowing that we have been forgiven. If we are to live a new life, if we are to be new people, we must be aware of those emotions within us that must be taken under control. That must be kept under control. We must have taken our eyes open to the opportunities of service and witness through kindness and tender heartedness and forgiveness directed towards the people that we meet. But we must also focus our eyes on him who comes with love, forgiveness and mercy and grace. So our focus is on Jesus Christ. He is the one who has forgiven us. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ, God forgave you. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly beloved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragment offering and sacrifice to God. So let us be imitators of God. Let us get rid of all anger, bitterness, rage, which is boiling in us. People have got volcanoes that are happening in their hearts, that are boiling, waiting to erupt one day and cause great damage in the lives of the loved ones, in the lives of other people. So it's time for us to get rid of all these things before the volcano erupts. God bless you. God be with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for everything. We thank you that you are God. We thank you that you continue to look after us. We come before you, Father, because you've called us to be your servants so that we worship you day and night. Thank you, Father, for helping us to understand that without you we can't do anything. So, Father God, we are here gathered here waiting to be blessed by you. As forgiven sinners, Father, we also need to forgive others and save others with compassion. For it is only through that we realize our position in you that we are forgiven sinners, saved by the grace of God. Thank you, Father. Bless us this morning as we continue to worship you as we continue to understand who you are, as we continue to bring things which sometimes are hard for us to know. In the stillness right now, Father, we come before you. Keep us walking in your ways. Help us, Father, to understand that as we look inward, we need also to look outward. And also need to look upward to you for us to control all the emotions that are going within us. Dangerous emotions that can destroy. Bless us, Father. In your name I pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, um, it's time for us to take our offerings. It's our thanksgiving. We are saying thank you, Lord, for what you've done to us and who you are. After, us, uh, after hearing the word of God, we always remember to be thankful because God has blessed us enough. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. 
with all the things that you have given us, all the material things that we have, all the things that we think of, the spiritual things that you have given us, the blessings that we have, and we come before you and you just want to say thank you, Lord, for giving us all these things, wonderful blessings. May you bless us, Father. May you continue to bless this offering which is now being given by your children wherever they are. Those who are willing, who are cheerful in their giving. Not those who feel like being forced. For God loves cheerful givers. Bless this offering. In your name I pray. Amen. Let us receive grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. God bless you all. Get rid of anger. In Jesus' name. Amen.